Hello my friends and welcome to today's video. I'm Jeanette with Evil Vintage Designs. In today's painting I am going to show you how to paint a very very simple flower pot and some simple little flowers using watercolor and I'm showing you my Muno pan paints. This is a great set of paints for the beginner. They're very affordable. You get 48 pans for I think I paid like $40. All the supplies and equipment are listed in the description box so please take a look if you want more information on the products you see me use. Um, if you don't see the list click on show more or the arrow pointing down and it will expand. And the brushes that I'm using are Anna Mason by Rosemary & Co. And these are great brushes for little paintings like this. You can see that the bristles are very short, so they give you some nice control. And I think you get four or five brushes. And I don't recall exactly what I paid for them, but they're synthetic brushes. And for this type of painting, this small painting, they're perfect. So here I am mixing all my paints first before I begin my painting. I find that if you mix your paints first or your colors first, that it makes painting a lot easier because you can just get to it without having to stop and uh, mix paint. Also, if you're using a wet and wet technique, it's very useful to have your paints ready so that your paper doesn't dry while you're mixing paints. And the paper that I'm using, um, I forget who makes this little sketch pad, but it's 100% cotton watercolor paper, and it's really great for these tiny little paintings. It keeps everything together and nice and organized. So, okay, back to mixing my paints. You can see that I mixed four different greens. Um, I just want to make sure that I have light and dark greens and the pinks that I decided to use for my flowers. I have three different pinks from light to darker and then I am mixing now off camera. Well, you can't really see it because I'm out of frame. I'm mixing a little shadow mix with using, I think I use ultramarine blue and um, burnt umber, no, burnt sienna. And then I also mixed a few different browns, uh, terracotta looking browns, red browns for the pot. So you can see that my water after mixing all these colors is not very clean, but um, that's actually a good thing because you can see where I'm laying down my water. I am wetting the area where my pot will be because I'm going to use the wet and wet technique to drop in my color. And the reason I'm doing that is because the colors, when you put wet paint onto wet paper, the colors kind of blend together and give you this really nice effect. They, as you can see, I'm just dropping in the darker color on one side, and then I'll add a lighter color in the center. All I'm doing is just basically dotting, nothing difficult. This painting is very beginner friendly. So again, you can see I'm just dotting in some color. And at one point I just clean off my brush and I drop a little water in there to create some blooms. I'm going to sharpen up my edges, add the lip to my flower pot, a little bit more darker color around the edges and around the lip of that top portion of the pot. And here I'm just dropping in some water to create some blooms. What happens is as the water expands on the paper, it pushes the paint and creates these pretty little blooms. Now, before you start um, adding your leaves, right now I'm just adding the flowers. I'm using the lighter color on the top of my bloom. And as I move down, I'll be using darker color. And you can see I'm using a tiny brush. I think this is a zero and I'm just dotting the brush. I am not creating individual flowers or anything. This is a very loose painting. And then I'm dipping my brush into the water and softening the petals that I added to the top. So again, you can see I'm using the lighter color. And as I move down my bloom, I'm using deeper colors.
and then just cleaning off my brush, softening up the edges of those top petals and even the bottom a little bit. And I think for this painting, I added, first I started with three blooms and then decided that I needed another. And of course, you don't have to use the colors you see me use in this painting. You can use whatever colors you like. But it's nice to be sure whatever colors you decide to use that you have diff um, different um, values of the colors because if you use just the same color it will look very flat so you want to make sure that you have different shades or different values so now i am starting to add my stems which is not really even necessary but i think that it's a good idea to add them because it gives you a guide it lets you know where you're going with this painting now before you start adding your leaves make sure that your pot is a little bit dry and that your flowers are not too wet either. Otherwise, your colors will blend into the pink or into the brown. And you can see here, I'm using a larger brush. I think this may be a size three or maybe even a one, I'm not sure. But all I'm doing is just dotting in the color using, again, just like with the flowers, a lighter color towards the top of the leaf. And as I move down, I'm using a deeper shade of green and I'm just drop dotting in the shape of a leaf. There's absolutely no definition. The only thing that sets apart one leaf from the other is the combination of colors that I use to create each leaf, the darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. And as I move down towards the pot, I'm using darker colors because there would be shadow in that area cast from the flowers and the leaves above. So I just use the tip of that brush to dot in the shape of leaves. And you can soften the tips or the edges of your leaves by simply cleaning your brush off in the water and dabbing on the paint in the area that you want to soften. And just move around the painting, adding your flowers or your leaves wherever you think you need them. Here I'm softening up the edges of that leaf and adding a little bit more darker color towards the bottom of that leaf so that it stands out against that flower. You can see here I'm just adding a little dab here and a dab there just to fill in the white space. I don't want too much of it. Looking around to see where I may need another little flower and I decided to add one over here. Following the same steps I did for the others. And now that I have my leaves down, I think that my flowers are blending too much. They're too soft, so I'm just adding a little bit more color just to deepen it a little bit so that they stand out. And then off camera, I decided to add some uh, leaves that are going over the lip of the pot using a much darker shade of green. As you can see right here, there they are. They magically appeared. And now I'm just going back over the leaves and adding a little bit more of the darker color at the base of the leaves so that they stand out. So this is the part of paint of the painting where I'm just adding detail going over 
little areas where I think I need a little bit more color. Again, just using the tip of my brush to dab in those shapes. Nothing is very defined. It's a very simple and loose painting. And then I decided that I was going to use a fine liner to add a little bit more detail to the painting and to find some of the areas. Right now I'm just adding a little bit more color to my flower pot. You can see I'm using that shade mix. And then I decided I wanted to add a shadow. And unfortunately, um, when you're creating the shadow, I find that it's best to use clean water. Clean, clean water. Not like I did. My water was um, not very clean. So as I started to add this shadow, I was getting these uh, very defined lines, which was not the look that I was going for. So I did struggle with this for a little bit trying to clean it up and soften it up and so of course you don't have to add this but if you decide that you want to add a shadow what you should do is wet down the area or at least what I like to do for this type of painting is I wet down the area where I want my shadow to be and I add um, a concentrated deeper cut of the shadow mix around the base of the pot because that's where it would be darkest and then I like to let the paint just flow where I have into the area that I have wet down and I can soften it with a clean brush if I need to but um, as I said the water was not clean so you can see here I'm trying to soften up those edges because I don't want any hard lines so I'm just wetting it down with my dirty water and using the paper towel to lift some of that color off and to soften those lines a little bit. Still struggling. <laughs> so you can see that hard line at the bottom. I really don't want that. So I'm just trying to deepen my shadow a little towards the um, the base of the pot. What I ended up doing was cleaning my brush in the dirty water and using the paper towel again to soften up those edges. And at this point, I think I said, okay, that's enough. Let me just leave it alone. And all things considered, it didn't turn out as bad as <laughs> I thought it was going to look. So now just to add a little bit more interest into this uh, little loose painting, I decided to add a little splatter. So I dipped into the pink, made sure that my brush was nice and wet, but not sopping wet, tapped the brush against my finger and splattered a little bit of the pink and the green. And then I used a little bit of the darker brown to splatter on the pot and give it some texture. And then I did use a fine liner after the painting was completely dry, I think the nib was either a size, I think it was a size 0.2. And by holding the, the uh, fine liner towards the top and not towards the tip, I have less control and my lines are not as sharp, not as straight, which is always the look that I have a tendency to go for. And you can see here, I'm holding it about the middle of the pen and I'm just drawing some very light lines. You can barely see them, but it just adds a little bit of definition and just a little detail. Here, I'm just drawing some lines to indicate a little bit of shadow. Make sure that everything is completely dry before you start doing this because these fine liners are water-based and if you use them in wet areas, they will bloom. You can see here, I'm just defining my leaves a little bit by outlining very loosely, just scribbling the shape of a leaf, adding a little vein here and there. And in my flowers, I'm just creating a few little loops to indicate petals, keeping it again very simple. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this painting, that you give it a try. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. 
and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye.